Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. I hope all of you are safe and healthy given what's happening right now. I had no plans on cooking this week in the kitchen. Um, my work schedule was quite busy this week with other things. I wasn't gonna shoot anything. And then global pandemic happens. Um, all of the productions that I was gonna work on this week are shut down because people don't wanna congregate. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll shoot some stuff in the studio. I go to the grocery store. I don't know what it's like where you live, but here in Toronto, the grocery stores are crazy. Everything, everything is gone. The, the shelves are pretty much picked clean. Um, people are panic buying. There's no need to panic buy. Um, there's really no need to panic buy. So Jules and I started looking around and saying, okay, well, we'll be fine. We've got lots of stuff in our pantry. We'll just cook what we've got and we'll make do. Everything will be fine. And then I thought, Let's bring you along for the ride. Um, I'll cook a few things that are really simple, edit them quickly, get them up, and maybe it'll help you out. So today we're gonna make a soup. And I'll tell you a story of this soup as we go along. So I've got a pot on here, um, fairly high heat. I've got some ground beef that I pulled out of the freezer last night, thawed it out. We're gonna put it in and we're gonna start to brown it off. And just get in there with the spoon and break it up a little bit. You don't want it to clump together as it's browning. That's browning up nicely. Now. This is a soup I've never made before. We have quite a few ground beef soups on the website, on the channel. Um, most of them have rice and cabbage in them. Um, those are really good. Couldn't get any cabbage. Didn't have any cabbage in the house. Um, but I saw this recipe in the newspaper yesterday. Yesterday or the day before yesterday. Um, and it's from Ricardo. And now if you live in Canada, you'll know who Ricardo is. Uh, really great chef from Quebec. Um, has a magazine. He's, you know, he is a, uh, he's, he's a really good guy. He's got a, a recipe here for hamburger flavored soup. And I read it and I thought, huh, that's interesting. Um, but what could I do with what I have in my house? And even though I had all of the ingredients for the hamburger soup, I thought, let's take it in a completely different direction. Let's make taco flavored soup. So that's what we're going to make. We're going to make taco flavored soup using stuff that Julie and I already had in our pantry. Stuff that you probably have in your pantry or some version of it that you have in your pantry already um, that you can just throw together really easily. Next into the beef pot are a couple of sliced onions, a pantry item that we always have, something that's always in the cupboard or in the fridge, and some chipotle and adobo sauce. We always have a couple of cans of chipotle and adobo sauce and if I don't finish a full can, I'll stick it in a container and put it in the freezer and then just slice off what I need when I need it. And so that's what I did this morning. We're gonna give this a stir and we're gonna cook it down until the onions have softened. Now, I've already started building flavor in this pot by browning the beef and putting in the chipotle and adobo sauce. Uh, next in, I'm gonna put some of our homemade taco spice. If you don't have our homemade taco spice in your pantry, because uh, probably you don't, um, a packet of taco spice would work fantastic. So I'm sure a lot of you will have that in the back of your cupboard or a spice, spice blend that is um, Tex-Mex or, or something along those lines. So I'm just gonna put in a couple of spoonfuls and see what happens. Now ours is a mix of a bunch of different things. Um, I will link to the recipe below if you wanna check it out. I'm just going to put that in, stir it in to coat everything, and then the next in is Rotel. And I would put in two cans of Rotel if I had them, but I don't. So, um, sort of make up, I'm going to add in one of our jars of stewed tomatoes, because we have a lot of stewed tomatoes down in the basement. Um, it's something we make every summer, we keep over the winter, we use all the time. Uh, I don't expect that a lot of people do this. Um, at this point in 2020. But if you do, this is a great way to use up your tomatoes. And if you don't, um, I'm sure you've got a couple of cans of tomatoes in your pantry. So I'll just stir this in and get it going. Now the next thing we need is some stock. Chicken stock, beef stock, pork stock, whatever stock you want to use, vegetable stock. Um, if you're grabbing your pantry and what you need is a box like this, that's fine. It's in your pantry, it always should be in your pantry. It's always in our pantry, just in case. But um, last night, or two nights ago, we pulled the chicken out of the freezer and roasted it. And after I finished the chicken last night, I put the bones in this pot, 
uh, along with a couple of celery stalks and an onion, um, a little bit of salt and pepper, and stuck it in the oven, 180 degrees, and I've left it overnight. So this has been in here for about 12 hours. So what we've got is a nice, beautiful, clearish, dark stock. And that's what I'm gonna use in the soup. And making stock in the oven is just so simple because you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stir it. You don't have to worry about it boiling over or boiling or getting cloudy. Um, you don't worry about it evaporating too much with a lid on in the oven. It just goes, put it in, you forget about it. 12 hours later, you've got an, an incredible stock. So I think I've got enough stock in there now. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and just kind of let it go for about 15 minutes. And I'm gonna stick our lucky iron fish in because about 10 minutes of boiling will give us enough iron in this soup just to top us up a little bit. Before I put the last couple of ingredients in, I just need to fish out the fish. It's usually pretty easy to find, there it is. And it's hot, so a pair of tongs or something else just to grab it. Now, last two ingredients. Um, I'm gonna put in some pickled jalapenos. I think the pickled jalapenos uh, will bring quite a bit of flavor to it, but also the vinegar that it's pickled in will add a really great brightness to the flavor. Uh, vinegar or an acid of any kind is great in a soup because it sort of, uh, it brightens everything up, makes everything taste better. So I've got those in and macaroni. Macaroni, uh, not really a taco ingredient at all, <laughs> but um, I think macaroni in this soup will be great. So in that goes. Now, I'm just gonna cook this until the macaroni is uh, al dente or cooked through. You could cook the macaroni separately and then put it in just as the soup finishes. Uh, by putting the macaroni in now and letting it cook in the broth, it will thicken the soup a little bit. The macaroni will release starches to thicken the soup and it will also, as it cooks, absorb some of the liquid taking on the flavor of the soup and getting that flavor all the way through the macaroni. Hey Jules. Hey Glenn, hey friends. So how'd your soup work out? I see you're doing some... Um, it occurred to me at the last minute that frozen corn would be really good in this. Well, you know me, more so, vegetables. I'd like more vegetables in this is usually my statement. So maybe, you know, that much corn and I'll just stir it sure. in and frozen corn cooks immediately. I mean, as soon it as it's just in there. Just needs um, we're probably good to scoop it out. Ooh, tasty. All right. Now, one of the things I always try to get across on this channel is learn methods. If you learn methods instead of learning recipes, then you can look at something like this from Ricardo. Thanks, Ricardo. <laughs> and take inspiration and make it your own. Because um, we almost had everything. We uh, probably did have it. No, uh, we didn't have any deal pickle. No, we do. Yeah, we've got everything that's on this list, but I thought let's just take it in a different direction and, and see what happens. And I think all of these flavors work well together. So what you can do if you've learned methods is you can take flavors that work in other dishes and then just sort of transform it into something else. I mean, let's face it, how many different flavors are tomato-based flavors, right? Uh, I mean, so many soups. So many soups are tomato-based. Tomatoes are such a yeah. global uh, yeah. type of fruit. And so you get this, and I know that I know that you know macaroni. Maybe not very taco-y, but I think it works in this. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And there you could also put rice in it. Oh, Glenn, <clears throat> it might be a little spicy. <laughs> no, once you've had it in there a while, it builds up. You got it now? Um, no. Okay, so maybe too much chipotle in adobo sauce. <laughs> but you know, I'm riffing. I think it's. I think it's still. A little dal dollop of yogurt will take care of that. A um, little bit of sour cream. Put some cheese on top. Mm. You've got cheese. You could crumble in nacho chips. I mean, you could. I, I, I mean, we go into this at the end of every, every video. video. Enjoy it. Make it your own. Make it your own. Let us know what you do. Um, so stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, really good. Mm -hmm. I wonder if chicken...